Hello everyone, welcome to my Instagram. Uh, today we're just going to be reviewing the 1990 Hong Kong movie A Moment of Romance, uh, which is uh, starring Andy Lau, Jacqueline Wu, Ng Man Tat, and Tommy Wong. And uh, it's directed by Benny Chan. Um, yeah, it was released in 1990. It was um, produced by the company's uh, Movie Impact and Packer Hill. And yeah, when it came out, it was a really successful film. Now, the plot of the film was um, about a man named Wadi. He's a young guy who's kind of a low-level guy in the triad. And yeah, because they need to make money for a... Um, a court case where the godfather is needs funds for so they have to actually embark on a jewelry heist and uh yeah so he's like the getaway driver and of course the the robbery doesn't go to plan especially the escape where um they have to split up after they after they go out and um Andy Lau in a last attempt ends up getting a hostage to escape from the police uh, and he manages to um, abduct a young girl named Jojo who's about 16, 17 years old and um, whilst escaping the um, the capo I would say the other triad guy who was actually in charge of the heist which was um, Trumpet played by Tom Tommy Wong wants her dead because says she's recognised us. Uh, but of course, Andy Lau, being the gangster with a good heart again, Wadi, decides to save her. But then that kind of also lands him in trouble with the triads and also the police heart on his tail. But then of course, things happen where somehow both of them get together, the feelings develop and... Um, yeah, Andy Lau kind of, Wadi, the character, starts seeing that um, maybe there's a life outside of organised crime where he has um, aspirations of going straight. Um, but not everything goes well because uh, especially when the, uh, the godfather is actually killed, uh, he dies in a hospital and... Um, Yep, and then there's a power struggle within the triad, which um, eventually leads to um, to dire consequences. Now, this film, I mean, I've, I've seen it many times since the 90s. I saw it on uh, VHS from Made in Hong Kong. And then eventually I managed to track it down on a DVD. I got the Korean uh, DVD not so long ago. And now I actually have it on Blu-ray, which uh, came this last week in the post by King Media. Now, yeah, the film is interesting because when you see the images, like for example, the DVD cover, even the posters, and you would kind of think, oh, it's kind of like a very kind of heartwarming, I mean, with a title like A Moment of Romance, you would think it's an actual heartwarming, you know, tale of love in Hong Kong about young people. But um, yeah, it's, it's like it's totally the opposite. It's actually a very violent movie. Uh, there's there's quite a lot of action in this film, and uh, it's kind of like a crossroads movie where you kind of see that okay, a character like Wadi, who's since a young age has actually been involved with the triad. His only kind of mentors were his uncle called Rambo, which is played excellently by uh, the late Ng Man Tat. Uh, which actually won him a Best Supporting Role uh, Actor Award at the Hong Kong Film Awards. And uh, his godfather, who's... Uh, I keep forgetting the guy's name. He was actually one of the bad guys in Project A Part 2. And he also played one of the Tartars or Mongols in uh, Eight Diagram Pole Fighter. Um, yep, yeah, who's uh, kind of like a good-hearted Don. And also there's uh, these three... Um, aging prostitutes that have actually helped raise Andy Lau since he was a kid because as you learn the backstory his mom had actually killed herself 
when he was really young. So they've actually kind of helped raise him. So being that they're the only option he's ever had as a, as well as a career has been within the triad. But as you'd see, he would always thought after meeting the young girl Jojo, who actually comes from a much affluent background. Her parents are actually rich. And they have aspirations of her do of their daughter going to um, study in Canada to become something much more successful. But then that also causes like a problem with their relationship. But it's mainly when uh, things go sour within the triad. And of course, Trumpet has beef with um, with Wadi. And also has aspirations of becoming the godfather at one point. That's where things start to turn sour. You would know that eventually this film is not going to have a happy ending. Now, if you're familiar with Hong Kong movies, especially when they're set around the triad, kind of like elements, especially during the 80s and the 90s, the films that they used to make never had a happy ending. A lot of the time, they were the usual... starts off really kind of, you know shows that there's going to be light there's light at the end of the tunnel but pretty soon everything kind of just goes to hell there's a very bleak kind of aftertaste to the film which i think that like it works really well a lot of the time and um yeah i mean when it comes to performances of course um i thought andy lau i mean being that this is one of his signature roles of being a uh playing a a gangster with a good heart or triad youth. I mean, he's been doing these kind of roles like since his, since the early 80s. But this is one of his more iconic roles. I mean, especially when you put it in comparison to films like uh, on, on the Wrong Track, which he which was really good. Um, As Tears Go By, which was a brilliant film with um, directed by Wong Kar Wai. And also um, A Moment of Romance. This was like when Andy Lau had actually shot to like superstardom. And um, yeah, this this film was great. And Man Tat was amazing. I think uh, Tommy Wong as Trumpet. I mean, many of you would know that he's actually a, um, a regular, especially especially in Ringo Lam films. And he's usually he's always been typecast as these really reckless, ruthless gangster type of roles. And also, he was he also featured in um, John Woo's The Killer. And uh, yeah, his character was called Mad Dog. <laughs> and he plays those type of roles effectively. And um, yeah, but the standout roles, I would say, has would have to be uh, Mantat as Rambo, uh, who's a, um, like, a, he's just a really poor guy who actually just, like, cleans people's cars and um, does, like, these odd jobs kind of things. He's, like, just mainly works on the street. He's kind of like seen as like a nobody by the triad, but he's always been there. He's he's an uncle for uh, the character Wadi, who's always been like, kind of like the inspirational or not inspirational, but he's always been seen as the um, a guy, a kind of a mentor for um, for the young character, who actually kind of guides him on a right path, trying to keep him out of trouble, and looks out for him. But um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, this film, I mean, itself, it was actually, when you come to think of it, I mean, this is the t a time when Hong Kong cinema was more or less booming. I mean, you had, like, films from Jackie Chan, which were pretty, Sammo Hung and Yun Bu, which were actually, like, really big. Golden Harvest was making a lot of movies. John Woo films were kind of, like, in full swing. And also, Choi, you had people like Choi Hark, and, uh, you know, stars like, of course, Jackie Samuel Yoon, Cha Yoon Fat, Leslie Chung was really big at that time. And uh, yeah, so and at this time, I mean, the people that were involved in this film, I mean, of course, Benny Chan, this was his first film as a director, which kind of, he went on to make bigger movies as his career progressed. And his most recent film, which is his final film, which was filmed just before his passing last year, uh, Raging Fire, which is due to come out. And... Um, yeah, of course, Andy Lau went on to become a huge megastar, which he is right now. I mean, he's he's become pretty big. And he's had a career that's last, lasted over five five decades now, which is uh, which is phenomenal. And, um, of course, I mean, we've got Benny Chan as director, but then as producers, you've got Johnny Toe, 
and then the uh, associate producers are Ringo Lam and Wang Jing. I mean, just those three names adding to the whole formula just makes it kind of like, it, this was actually quite a big deal when it comes to Hong Kong cinema. I mean, just those names involved, you would know that there's actually a lot of potential for something big to happen, something good has got to come out from this film. And the cinematography was, was pretty good. I mean, it has this had this very kind of gritty, kind of very kind of realistic feel to it, like in terms of some of the camera shots. It was done by Wang Wing Hang, who also was uh, the uh, director of photography for a a little film called A Better Tomorrow, amongst others. So, but it just shows that his his, um, his style in this movie very similar to uh, Andrew Lau's work on films like Wild Search and um, As Tears Go By which kind of has this very gritty urban feel with a lot of neon lights. And of course, this film, it kind of, it, it captures the, uh, that time period in Hong Kong, which is the late 80s, early 90s kind of feel where you could kind of see that the city was kind of growing, but there was also these very, well, murky kind of like gritty, like urban, settings to it which um which which i thought was really well done and the d the blu-ray which i have now is by uh, king's media um yeah it's region free it only has the uh 2.0 cantonese uh, dts hd track and um yeah there's english subtitles there's the korean subtitles the subtitles were kind of a bit hit and miss they don't really uh, capture the um, the dialogue as well, but they're readable. And the picture quality is quite grainy at some parts, especially um, in, in the opening sequence where the, when it comes to the titles. But as the film goes on, it actually clears up pretty well, and uh, not exactly not exactly on the same quality or level as um, you know recent like two K or four K restorations that have been released by. 88 films criterion or uh, 88 or uh, eureka i mean those level of film those level of kind of like picture qualities are great i mean the special features there's only a um a trailer and that's about it. it's a very bare bonesy kind of release but it's the only it's the only blu-ray that i know of that's actually been released of this film and i would say the film looks amazing the best version of the film that i've seen there is there isn't that green tint that there has been on like previous releases of the film especially during some of the darker scenes uh like shot at night um it just very looks really clear at times and um yeah i would say definitely it's actually worth it I mean, you may be able to get a decent co uh, copy at a, a reasonable price from uh, ebay which is where i uh, purchased it but overall i would say this film itself i would say i'd say four and a half stars it's aggressive it's angsty it's got a very emotional center i mean the, the soundtrack which is a uh, songs mainly by um a, a band called beyond and also shirley chan she did one of those tracks i mean the songs actually have the subtitles so you can kind of know what the lyrics are saying which add to the um the element of kind of like romance and also kind of love itself this theme kind of becomes more central and also kind of ill-fated romance you can kind of see the whole it fits in with the actual the themes of the film overall i would say it's a four and a half out of five brilliant film i loved it the dvd the, the blu-ray i would say overall i would say maybe four stars just because the film itself has never looked this good but there's nothing on the features just a trailer so it could have been better overall i recommend it definitely get it if you can